God's grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Be seated. May the power of the Holy Spirit be with us this morning as we listen to his word. May he guide us to grow in our faith now and forever. Our text is from the second chapter of St. Luke, and it may sound a little familiar because parts of it are from last week's gospel. When the time of the purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, you have promised, and now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and to the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was being said about them, and Simeon blessed them. And then he said to his mother Mary, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And Mary, a sword will peace pierce your own soul too. I imagine that every one of you at some time or another in your life has held a small child in your arms. How did it feel? I remember the first time that they trusted me with my little cousin. I was about eight years old. And they said, Tim, do you want to hold her? Sure. So my mom had me sit down in a chair, taught me how to support the head with my hand, and they placed my little cousin in my arms. Oh, it felt so good to be trusted with her, this little precious baby. I was a little apprehensive, though. I didn't want to hurt this little thing. It seemed so fragile. It made a deep impression on me. I guess it must have because I remember it so clearly to this day. And then again, I, I remember holding my first daughter in my arms for the first time. Oh, what a joy! A gift of God. But after that first experience, they all kind of blend together. I don't remember anything particular. Maybe it was because for many times the other ones were <clears throat> to change diapers. <laughs> but now, I want you to imagine this morning, like Simeon, meeting the Christ child. And like Simeon taking that child in your arms. What would you feel? Wow. Mary did it. Joseph must have. Simeon did in our text. And Anna came close, but maybe she never did, but probably regretted it later. How do you think that you would have felt holding the baby Jesus in your arms. As far as we know, 
the shepherds never held the baby Jesus. They went away after glorifying the baby, praising God and telling everybody that they had heard what they had seen. The wise men came and they worshipped the baby Jesus, probably didn't hold him in their arms, but presented him with gifts. Mary, I'm sure, felt it deeply that she was worthy to be chosen to be the mother of the Christ child, the Savior of the world. As she sang to Elizabeth when she was pregnant and went to visit her, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior for he has been mindful of the humble estate of his handmaiden Mary. Certainly her heart sang for praise with joy as she held that God-given child in her arms as the shepherds came to worship him and told Mary and Joseph what the angels had said. Today in the town of David, a Savior, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And Luke reports, and in our text, Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Would you, after holding the baby Jesus, ponder that experience in your heart? I'm sure you would never, ever forget it. Joseph must have had a, a similar experience and he must have held the little baby in his arms at some time or another, but the poor guy, for some reason, not a word of Joseph is ever recorded in Holy Scripture. I guess he was the strong, silent type. But he heard about the angel of the Lord in his dream telling him, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will call his name Jesus. Why? Because he will save his people from their sins. <laughs> Can you imagine what Joseph thought when he woke up from his dream? Um, okay, Lord, I'll do whatever you want, just so I can marry Mary. And when Joseph held his adopted son in his arms and the baby looked up into his eyes, he must have been filled with the realization about what God was doing in his grace and mercy for him and all mankind. And Joseph had a humble realization of his part in protecting this Savior child and his new wife, Mary. But now there was this old guy, Simeon, in the temple. His name means obedient listener. He was a, a righteous man and very devout in his faith to the point that he knew of the prophecies that God would send a Savior. And by the Holy Spirit, he knew that it was going to be much more than the Jews were expecting of, of just a liberator from Roman tyranny. He knew that the child would save the world, including us Gentiles, for the gift of life everlasting in heaven. The Holy Spirit brought Simeon to the temple that day that Mary and Joseph had brought Jesus to be dedicated and Mary to be purified. The Holy Spirit told him that he would live to see the day of the Lord's Christ. He wouldn't die until that point. And, and that was a special tribute to his kind of faith. Simeon 
instantly recognized the young family and Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. And he took the baby in his arms and he praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, you have promised. You have now dismissed your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people. A light for the revelation of the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. If you were holding the baby Jesus, what would you say? Would God lead you by the Holy Spirit to prophesy? Would you say, wow, what a privilege, what a blessing. Mary and Joseph once more were amazed at what was said about this child. Mary, did you know? Sure she did. She knew, and so did Joseph. But the totality of all that this Christ child came to bring was so awesome that it was hard to comprehend all at once. Then Simeon prophesied a warning to Mary. This child, Mary, is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel, to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thousands of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. When Jesus came to bring salvation, he was not totally accepted by all. In fact, the high priests fought against it because they were concerned about their position, their wealth, and their political power. We strive today with political situations in our world, and some people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ accept His Holy Scripture and follow it. But many today do not. It divides even families over unbelief and faith. To the point that finally Simeon's warning to Mary that her heart would be pierced certainly referred to the fact that he would die on the cross for their sins. That had to hurt Mary a great deal. You know that the beautiful gift of Christ at Christmas, while we decorate and adorn our homes and share packages and celebrate, is all filled with joy. But there's another religious celebration that also needs to be included in the birth of Christ, and of course, that's the gruesomeness of his death followed by the joy of his resurrection. But even then, the gift of Christ is not complete. It's only complete when we know God's chosen people that he did it all for us. Christ did it, not for himself, not for his Father, but for us, that we might believe and be saved and go to heaven regardless of what happens to us in our life. To hold on to that faith and to trust in that Lord Jesus Christ, to know that he loved us so much to send his only son Jesus, to die on the cross, to rise again for us. For you, I'd like to take John 3.16 and to personalize it. To say, not God so loved the world. God so loved me. God so loved you. Insert your name. That he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish 
but have eternal life. Hey, we don't have to be afraid of COVID. If we get it, we get that sick, we're, we're going to heaven. May you, each one, accept that Jesus died for you. Now, Anna the prophetess was also there in the temple that day, and she too came forward giving thanks to God for all that he had given in this trial, Jesus, and being supportive of the Savior that all people were waiting for, but not everybody saw and accepted. Okay, now, imagine again that you're holding the baby Jesus in your arms. Well, what would you do? What would you say? And more importantly, what would you feel? A privilege? Humility? Deep faith? Awe? Normally, we, we think about God and His Savior, Jesus Christ, holding us in His almighty arms. And that, that's so very comforting. But as we enter into this new year, I would like you to consider holding Jesus in your arms tightly. We all hope that 2022 will be a better year than last year. I'm no prophet. But as I look at the indications of our world, politics, wars and threats of wars, I don't think it's going to be a better one than last year. It's going to be a rough ride, especially for us Christians. So the best way to get through it is by holding on tightly to Jesus and to let him hold on tightly to us, grasping both and hanging on for dear life in our faith and in might. That's the only way to meet each day and the new year. May you hold your Lord dear and tightly in your arms in this new year. Blessed 2022. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.